Uh, this is just to let you know, this will be, there's two parts to this, part one and part two, where I asked my friend Dana Ross, who makes the majority of my flutes, if he would do a playing technique video for me, because Dana explains it very well, a lot better than I can ever think of it doing. So just uh, to let you know, there is part one and part two. And to say, if you'd like to get a hold of me, just uh, if you would, use the najiblue at gmail.com, which is on the video. If you have a request for a song you'd like for me to put on there, then let me know and I'll get it on there. So y'all have a good day and we'll catch up to you later. Dan and Ross, Falcon Flutes. Um, working with Keith Davis a lot on his flutes. This is one that uh, he and I worked together to come up with a design. And um, yeah, it was quite a project to come up with a mouthpiece that would allow you to play any combination of two of three different barrels, or all three, or a single. Anyway, uh, we just worked on it, put some cabochons in it so that he has indexes on the lower side of it so that he can uh, change hands and have a reference to where, where, where to place his fingering without having to look. Anyway, we're in my shop. We got a lot going on here. Flutes everywhere. So we're going to we're going to go over a little bit of uh, basic playing technique. Okay, basic playing which is what we call a straight blow. You would just blow lightly and what you want to do is breathe into the flute, not blow. Just breathe into the flute, normal breath and open fingers simultaneously. I mean uh, consecutively, one at a time, progressive. Notice we skip this finger. This is a six hole flute, and what is more traditional would be a five hole flute. But later years they started adding the sixth hole for people that wanted to uh, explore a little more with different notes. The next thing we would teach would be teeing a note. That's making a, a very small teeing sound or teeing a breath at the beginning of each note. So you want to do that at the beginning of each note as you transition from note to note. Now any of these techniques can be used in multiples. Then I think the next thing we would teach, which is uh, relatively easy, it's called bending a note. Now with the Native American flute, anything you do on this lowermost note is very sensitive. So bending a note down there is going to be rather difficult on most flutes. So bending a note is merely slowly sliding your finger off of the, the finger hole and allowing it to, to slur into the next higher note. Now in bending a note, you don't have to uh, be tied to just doing a single note. You can bend multiple notes at a time, multiple fingering at a time like this. Keep in mind that any more than one at a time, it becomes more difficult because you've got to have them timed exactly the same or it's not going to sound right. Uh, let's see, some of the other uh, techniques. Probably, um, we have a couple of techniques that we like to refer to as trill. We have one that we call finger trill, which is... And I like to use a cheat method myself because I, I, I play the flute 
uh, solely by itself. I don't play with uh, other tuned instruments. Um, what I mean by the cheating method is my most dexterous finger is, is my number one digit on my right hand. And so I use that to do the trill, which I can do much faster than I can with each individual finger. Keep in mind that when you do that, that each note is not entirely on pitch. If you want it to be entirely on pitch because you're playing with other tuned instruments, you've got to use each finger hold directly. Does that make sense? Um, the other type of trill would be tongue trill. Some people just uh, genetically cannot do this. It's rolling your tongue. As you can hear, I'm not real good at that either. I don't use that technique much myself. But you want it in your arsenal if you can do it. Uh, let's see. Now we're going to get into a couple of techniques that are more difficult. Um, the first one being enhancement. This, to me, this is the essence of the Native American flute. Uh, it's a technique that that you really hear the ethnic sound of the instrument. Um, you're going to hear in all the recordings out there. It's a timing thing and all it takes is practice. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to pop this upper note very quickly at nodal transition. Whenever you transition up or down, pop that upper finger. Simultaneous with the transition of the other fingers. This is what it sounds like. Now, if you want a little richer sound, you can pop both upper fingers. Now, a little, little uh, word of warning. If you stay too long, you will jump an octave, which is what we term overblow. That was allowing the flute to go to overblow by going a little too slow with this upper finger. So, if you want a little richer transition, just be aware that you've got to be quick or else you will jump into overblow. This gives you a, a little richer enhancement. 